America was founded based on an abundance of land, an abundance of space, an abundance of opportunity, an abundance of social mobility, and when it came time, an abundance of energy. Energy is an essential input into our quality of life. It's an essential input into our economy. How do we meet those growing energy demands while at the same time meeting some other key challenges? The environmental challenge, addressing the security issues that surround energy. The problem here in the United States is that people don't know where energy comes from. We want to flip on our light switches, we want to turn the ignition in our automobiles, and we want to use energy without understanding the consequences. Over our history, we've had such plentiful resources that there have only been these very few times, times of national emergency, that we've ever really ever thought about our energy supply. So, so what are those times? 1973 oil crisis. The gas wasn't there. There were even days and odd days when you could go. There were long lines. America truly was held hostage. The economy was brought to its knees. Another example more recent is uh, what happened in, say, 2007 and 2008 when the price of oil went from about uh, $70 uh, up to about $148. It was something, of course, that's on everybody's mind because, of course, you see the price of gasoline posted on every street corner in America. If the price of gasoline's at $4.11 a gallon, that hits you right in the pocketbook. And if something happens on the demand side, like recessions, then supply can get really far ahead of demand and prices fall. The price of oil in particular is highly cyclical. As a matter of fact, we've seen periods where prices rise dramatically, uh, uh, followed by periods where prices fall dramatically, and then we sort of start the whole thing over again. All energy sources have costs associated with them. Those costs come in different forms. There's the costs that come with dollar signs attached to them. You know, how much we pay for gasoline at the pump, how much we pay for our electricity. There's the costs that don't have dollar signs attached to them. Those tend to be environmental costs. It's virtually incontrovertible that the climate is warming. The evidence is so profound and so comprehensive that that really is not a discussion. The big question that people still debate is how much warmer and what will the consequences be for people. We know a lot more than we did even a decade or two ago, but there's always going to be uncertainty remaining. We put stuff into the atmosphere, whether it's the traditional pollutants or carbon dioxide, without recognizing that on some level, some generation in the future is going to have to pay for that, if not our generation. The most the pressing issue when we talk about energy policy is really not energy per se, it really is more about the environment. And this is not just in the halls of academia or on the streets, it's actually uh, all the way up into the halls of Washington. At least currently in the United States we don't have a comprehensive climate policy. So while there is a cost to emitting ca carbon dioxide emissions and a cost to emitting greenhouse gas emissions in the form of increased risk of global climate change, we don't face that economic cost directly. The Paris meetings resulted in an agreement among the countries that were involved to do something to reduce CO2 emissions. That something, though, is very nondescript. It basically boils down to a bunch of voluntary contributions that are not binding. You can take that two ways, really. You can say, oh, this is great. Countries are now coming together and they're making an agreement on doing something about carbon dioxide emissions. On the other hand, you can look at it and say, all right, well, it's just paper, right? They agreed to do something. They didn't say what, and there's no really strict limit that's, that's being put in place. The Trump administration has announced that it's going to leave the Paris Climate Accords. So that kind of takes us out of this global effort to reduce greenhouse gases. At the same time, there are many states that are going along with their own plans to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So it's still an open question about how much damage the Trump administration can do. Because of the dismissal of the issue by President Trump, the public is much more aware of it than they have been. My question is how fast are we going to go down this path? If we do nothing, the situations we are describing will just continue to get worse. I don't believe that we will you know, have one apocalyptic day, I think we will gradually erode our quality of life and the security of our economic well-being. 
until something happens that really shocks the system. Then I think we will act. But the question is that how deep is the hole we've dug before we have to climb back out of it? It's really about the profound impacts that we are having now, seven billion people, the doubling of the need of energy on this planet over the course of the next few decades, the doubling of the need that we're gonna to have to produce food to feed a growing population. This is not just about some kind of blind, feel-good sort of thing. This is about where we're going globally with more people living more prosperous lives, trying to do more things. The pressure is on, and we have to produce more with less consequence, not just because of climate change, but because of planet change. There's a responsibility there in terms of making sure that whatever it is that you're doing to produce energy, whether it's drilling oil and gas wells, mining coal, using wind power, using solar, whatever it is that you're doing has an environmental consequence. And the goal ought to be to minimize the environmental impact. And so the ability to understand the trade-offs and the ability to be honest about what it actually costs that is the thing that everyone's got to be able to do. And so the thing that we need the most of, which is the research and the wisdom to be able to have people be fully informed about things, that's the thing that we're actually lacking. If we're going to have a rational, realistic, productive conversation about energy and where we're going and the decisions that need to be made and the trade-offs that are involved, what's got to stop is the sort of man the barricades, sniping, charge, countercharge, and the realization that there really is a place in the middle. There really are new technologies. There really are capabilities to address this challenge. But at the end of the day, a lot of this is really on my shoulders and your shoulders, because we are ultimately the consumers of the energy. But for some reason, we don't understand that. We grow accustomed to having relatively readily available supply. And when you think about all that, you become aware of why we feel the way we feel about energy. It's always been there. We have this you know, great possibility of having you know, cheaper electricity and the ability to sustain our economy and our economic growth with resources that are produced right here in the United States. If we could address the environmental challenges while simultaneously doing so in a way that people think is economically affordable, is politically feasible, and also addresses energy security concerns, that's where the solutions lie. If we put our mind to it, the whole energy infrastructure that we have today could be completely changed into a low carbon energy future just through technology. We are now starting to see some of these technologies mature on a commercial level. And investors are comfortable enough now with these technologies that investment in renewables has surpassed fossil fuels. And we will develop technology as we go along which will make these, these sources of energy more efficient and cheaper. We need to take a very measured approach. We need to understand that winding down our dependence on fossil fuel is not something that's going to happen overnight, but it's going to take place over decades. These are true 21st century globalized issues, problems, challenges that we now confront that require 21st century globalized solutions. The question is whether that will be our priority or not. And that's the challenge.